And joining me now, Heather Timmons is a White House correspondent for Quartz, and Aaron Blake is a Washington Post political reporter. Aaron, I want to start with you. So many people are saying that this is very similar to the House bill. What stands out for you? Well, I, a lot of it is pretty similar. I think the biggest differences are how they handle the federal insurance subsidies. Uh, the House bill would handle that by age. This is handling it by income, which is how uh, the Affordable Care Act or Obamacare does it. Uh, the other one is the phasing out of the uh, Medicare expansion in this bill will will take place over a longer period of time than the House bill, uh, but in the end the cuts will wind up being deeper. So those are two of the bigger differences. I imagine this is going to be changed probably more once we get through an amendment process. I think that members who are expressing some reservations about this bill are going to have a chance to have those reservations addressed so that they can go back to their constituents and say that they got something out of it. Uh, but for now, we're starting with a package that's pretty similar to what the House passed right now, uh, for good or ill, and, and that's what they're going to try to pass. Heather, Aaron was mentioning about how uh, there are some reservations that folks have. What are you hearing that Republicans in particular are concerned about? You know, the, the House bill, 23 million people would potentially use health, lose health care coverage. Sure. There's a, there's a lot of Republicans that are concerned that their own constituents are going to lose Medicaid coverage. Um, we've seen a lot of these more conservative Republicans, especially pushing ones that have older populations, pushing to make sure the costs for those people aren't very high. And right now, uh, this does look like it's a lot more expensive than uh, Obamacare or even the House bill for elderly people. And Aaron, when you talk about Medicaid funding, there's going to be a big chunk of this that's cut. What are people most concerned about? What's standing out on that front? Well, anytime you you have a bill or in a law in Obamacare that uh, offers a subsidy or, or additional government funding for a program, uh, and then you wind up taking that away a few years later, there's going to be a lot of, of consternation about that. Uh, we had, of course, when Obamacare uh, had that Medicaid expansion, a lot of Republican governors decided not to take it. Uh, but the ones that did, this has, been hap this has been going on in their states for a number of years. Their concern was that this wouldn't be around for a long time, and now we're seeing in the Republican health care bill uh, that that could wind up being the case. So uh, I think that's going to be a big topic of discussion. The other big topic of discussion uh, is going to be, of course, the number of uninsured and whether or not this bill is going to increase that by a similar amount to the House. Uh, we're expecting to see a CBO report, I think, in pretty short order on this bill, especially since it bears many uh, similarities to the House bill. And I just want to point out what you're seeing there on your screen just a short time ago were protests, I believe, outside of Mitch McConnell's office over this health care bill. Heather, I want to ask you about switching gears, the president tweeting, always a good conversation point. Uh, today he tweeted out, with all of the recently reported electronic surveillance, intercepts, unmasking, and illegal leaking of information, I have no idea whether there are tapes or recordings of my conversations with James Comey, but I did not make and did not have any such recordings. What do you make of that, Heather? Well, he seems to be backtracking from what he said a few weeks ago when he sort of threatened, you know, that Comey better hope there aren't tapes. Um, and these meetings that he's talking about were in the White House. So the idea that someone else would be recording the president in the White House is, is sort of unheard of. Um, but it is him publicly coming out and saying he has no tapes now, which was a question we all had. Are you surprised, Heather? Because for so long it was sort of assumed that he was coming forward saying that there were these tapes. I, I, there's been a pattern of threats with this president, sort of hinting at or threatening at things that don't necessarily pan out. So I can't say I'm entirely surprised, no. Aaron, what do you make of the, this new tweet from the president? Well, this is a game that he's been playing for a number of weeks. Initially, of course, the threat was made uh, before James Comey was going to testify. It was a clearly uh, a, a very thinly veiled threat to James Comey to make him think twice about what he was going to say in that testimony. Ever since then, the press has still been asking the White House whether they have these tapes, and they haven't said for now almost six weeks. So uh, they, they bluffed, basically. They've been drawing out the string on this. They've been... Uh, kind of having some fun with this. But at the end of the day, uh, they knew what the truth was, and they decided not to share that truth with us for uh, more than a month's time. Mm. Heather, I want to go back for a second, back to health care, if I may. The CBO score, which uh, comes out potentially next week, mm -hmm. how crucial is that when you're talking about this health care debate and getting it passed? 
Well, that, that number needs to come out for the Senate to vote on it, first of all. And that does give us some hard numbers. It, it gives you, you know, last time it gave us that 23 million people would lose health care number. And this may be more or less, but it, but it, really, it, it really gives you a clear picture of how it could impact America. And Aaron, before we go, I want to ask you, you've got to get 50 votes in the Senate chamber there to get this passed through. Any sense as to whether they'll get that number? Well, right now we have 11 members who uh, we here at The Washington Post have counted who have expressed some reservations about this bill. Uh, you have to ask the question any time that happens, whether they're just posturing and they'll wind up voting for the bill, whether they're trying to get some concessions from the bill uh, when it's in the amendment process. All of that could be true. Uh, there's not a lot of margin for error, even less than there was in the House. Uh, and, of course, it was very difficult to pass this through the House. So we'll see what happens. But certainly a lot of Republicans have expressed concerns about this. It's a very unpopular bill. That's going to make Republicans think long and hard about whether or not they want to affix their names to this. Aaron Blake and Heather Timmons, thank you both for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.